We're going to demonstrate a DC test of polarity for a current transformer. We have an illustration here drawn of a uh, current transformer, a window style transformer. We've got a wire passed to the center of it, and we have an analog meter connected to the output terminals um, of the transformer. And here I've labeled the transformer as it appears in real life. The front face of the transformer is labeled H1, and then we have two terminals for the output, the secondary side, X1 and X2. So following polarity convention, H1 and X1 go together. So if you imagine this wire going through as having a polarity to it, a voltage drop, if the front face side is the positive and the back face side is the negative, we would expect at that moment in time for X1 to be positive and X2 to be negative. So we've hooked up the circuit like this with a battery, a little six volt battery, and I'm just gonna take this wire and touch it there. When we do that, we're gonna send a pulse of DC current through the current transformer. We'll measure the current coming out of it on the most sensitive scale this meter has. Now the needle movement is not very much. It's not a very strong effect. This is a fairly small CT with a small magnetic core. So the coupling is, is not as ideal as it would be for a large CT, but you can still see the effect. So watch the meter as I touch this and I break the connection. You'll see the needle jump up when I touch and go down when I release. Up, down, up, down. So that tells me when I touch this and send current to the CT, the upward jump of the needle tells me the polarity is what I expect. X1 is positive and X2 is negative. When I release the connection, you see the needle jump down because now the magnetic field in the CT is collapsing. And when that happens, the polarity reverses on the coil. And so you don't really pay attention as much to what happens when I release the connection as much as when you make the connection. So once again, make the connection, we see an up jump, and that tells me I've got the polarity I expect. If I had something incorrect in the CT, let's say somewhere in my wiring between here and there, I had a reversal, then I'd see the opposite. Whenever I connected to the battery, you'd see a down jump. Now I can simulate that by switching my wire connections here. I can actually do it backwards intentionally to show you what a wrong polarity would look like. So now watch the needle as I make the connection. The needle now goes down when I touch and up when I break. Down when I touch and up when I break. That's backwards. That's telling me, uh, looking at the diagram anyway, when I send a pulse of current to the CT, it would be suggesting that X1 would be negative at that moment in time instead of positive as it should be when I make the connection. And that would suggest either I have a CT that's improperly labeled mm -hmm. or more likely I've got a wiring error between the CT and where I'm doing the test. But this is an essential test to do for protective relaying and electrical metering systems to make sure the polarity is proper on the CTs. Otherwise, you may find yourself in a situation with improper polarity where the measurement or the protective relaying does not work as it should. In this particular case, all we are doing is measuring the amount of current going through there and tripping an overcurrent relay. So for our particular application in this lab, the polarity is not critically important. But if you're doing other sorts of protective relays like directional power, a 67 relay, or you're doing a distance relay, 21, uh, or a differential current relay, an 87, polarity is absolutely essential because then you're comparing the relative phases of multiple waveforms. And if you've got one polarity on your CT incorrect, that's gonna be completely messed up. So polarity is a very important check to do. So even on systems like this, we're just doing overcurrent. It's a good practice to verify polarity of your CTs and make sure all the wiring is exactly the way it should be.